Hello, sweet friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week, I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. In today's video, we are going to be using air dry clay and a mold to transform this old door into a beautiful serving tray. Next, we'll be taking this plain pillow cover and some felt to create this high-end dupe for spring. And finally, we will be creating some beautiful storage out of boxes from our pantry. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. I love using old doors in my projects. They are usually made of solid wood. They come in all different sizes, shapes, and colors, and they're pretty easily found as well. Now, because I don't want this to look so much like a door, I am going to be using my Iron Orchid Designs mold in classic elements. I know that I want to use this beaded design trim to be placed along this edge here on the inside, and I'm not sure which of these design elements I want to use on the outside, so I'm just gonna make a few of them to see which ones I like the best. Before inserting your clay, you just want to lightly dust with cornstarch. That is gonna help your clay to release more easily from the mold. Next, you just want to take a small section of your clay and kind of work it in your hands to warm it up and make it more pliable. And then begin pressing your clay into your mold. Remove the excess from around your design with your fingers and then use a scraping tool to flatten out the back. Turn it over and roll out your clay. So after making a few samples here, I'm going to go with that. It looks a little bit like a fleur-de-lis, and I think that it is going to be in good proportion with the size of this little beaded trim that I want to use on the inside edges here. I am going to go ahead off camera and make three more of these, and I'm going to make enough of the beaded detail to get it all glued in. So everything has been drying for a couple of hours. Your clay, as it dries, can shrink up. I made a couple of little extra pieces here. I'm gonna be placing them in the border, so then there will be no gaps in our design. I'll be using my tight bond wood glue. I squeeze a little bit of the glue out on a tile, run that down the back of my clay piece, Set it in there and give it just a little bit of a press and hold. And that's why I like to let my clay dry for a little bit. That way when I apply some pressure as I'm gluing, I am not going to distort the image of the clay. So off camera, I'm just gonna finish gluing down all of these decorative beaded trim pieces. And now we're gonna go ahead and get our little filigree attached. And we're gonna do the same thing with applying glue on the back and press it down. And I do have a little bit of glue seeping out, so I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and wipe that excess away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the remaining three off camera, and then we'll get some paint on our door. Now that we have everything glued down, we're gonna come back over and apply two coats of the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I like starting on the sides because then we can come back and smooth everything out over the top. And when you paint your sides, you're left with like a little ridge all around here. So we're just gonna come back over the top and smooth all of that right out. The first coat always looks pretty rough. To keep my paint from drying out between coats, I just stick the whole thing in a giant Ziploc bag. That way it's ready and waiting when this is dry and ready for our second coat. I like how the paint looks on this door. It turned out so, so pretty, but it actually took me three coats. I'm going to have Mr. Shabby put these gorgeous handles on here. I used these in a project last week as well, and I just love that hardware. You can see that there is gold accent paint on the hardware itself. I want to go back on these designs and hit the high points with some gold paint. Well, I had three different gold colors, 
So I just painted a scrap piece of wood with my plaster and then applied those gold paints to see which one was going to match up better with the gold in the handle. So I'm going to be using a small flat brush and holding the brush sideways, I'm just going to brush over those details. So that way it doesn't get into those areas, it just settles on the high points. I think that looks so pretty. And it looks really good compared with our handle. I'm gonna go in on the beaded area as well, and again, holding the brush flat, just glaze over the surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish all the rest of my details in the same fashion. And to seal and protect everything, I'm coming back over the top with some clear wax. And I rub in a circular motion, and then come back over the top and blot off the excess. And if it feels tacky, that means you just have too much wax and you just need to buff that off a little better. So I'm just gonna continue to coat the rest of my door here and get Mr. Shabby to put her handles on. So let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next project, we are gonna be making a pillow that I found in the Grandin Road catalog. I love that with the pink florals and the topiary. So I pulled it up on their website. You can see how cute that is. That is really, really cute. Now, if you don't want to make one, you're in luck because it's on sale for $67. So we're going to be doing our urn planter and our topiary florals out of felt. For my planter vase, I found an image that I liked on Google and I just printed it on cardstock and I'm gonna use that as my template. I am also using peel and stick for the planter. That way I can just lay this down, trace around it, and cut it out. So now that we have our vase cut out, we're going to be able to apply it to our pillow cover. I've measured three inches from the bottom of the seam and to the top of the tape. So this is three inches right here. I also measured and marked the middle of my pillow cover so that way we can get this easily lined up. Now all I have to do is peel off the backing paper and I'm not gonna peel all of that paper off. I like to do things in sections. And now I'm going to press that all into place. Pull up a little more of that backing paper and then get all of that pressed down. Make sure everything is pressed down really well and I can remove my painter's tape. And that's what we have so far. Our pillow cover is actually going to be spot clean only. The adhesive on the back of our peel and stick felt is not going to be machine washable. Next, I'm going to be using this olive green felt to make the stem of our topiary. That actually looks too tall to me. I think I'll like two inches better. I'm gonna cut an inch off of that. All right, that looks better. And now I'm gonna use my quick grip Now we just need to start making our flowers. So you can see from our inspiration piece here, the flowers are various shapes, colors, and sizes. So we're gonna do the same thing using our felt. Some of our flowers will be made from half inch wide strips of our felt, and then some of our flowers we will need circles. And I am using a two inch and a two and a half inch biscuit cutter, and I'm gonna trace around some circles using my candy pink and my baby pink felt that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. I am not sure how many flowers we're gonna need, but the thing is, if we've made too many, they can always be used on other projects. Some of my strips are nine inches long. Some of them are 12 inches long. And for your circles, you want to draw spirals in the middle. If you draw a smaller spiral, that's gonna give you a tighter flower. And a larger spiral will give you a looser flower. 
So now that we've done that, we just need to cut on those lines. So then that's the shape that we're left with. Then at this end, you want to put just a little bit of glue just to get your center started and roll that up. Add a little more glue and keep rolling. And we're trying to keep the bottom nice and flat. And then we've got our spiral here at the front. And you're just going to keep gluing and rolling down the entire length of your spiral. So the back is flat. The front is that cute little rolled rose. Then you've got this section left. So you're going to glue that on the back. And then that becomes the base of your flower. So that's what our rolled spiral roses look like. So that's how all of my circles are going to be made. And we're going to be making several different flowers using our strips. For this flower, we're going to use two of our half inch strips that are 12 inches long. You're going to take your scissors and you're going to make little snips very close together. And that's going to form like little fringe all the way down both colors of your pink strips. And now that we have the fringe cut on both of our pieces, we'll lay them on top of each other like this and glue those just like that. And you could glue them together first and cut the snips. It's just easier for me if I cut them separately. Felt is a pretty thick fabric and sometimes my scissors don't want to go through two layers. And put that glue as close to the bottom as you can get it. So we have our pieces glued together. We're going to add just a little dot of glue and we're going to roll over to get our center started. Add a little glue and roll. And again, we're keeping that bottom nice and flat. But the center is just this cute little fluffy little flower. How cute is that? So we're going to do the same thing all down this strip, just gluing and rolling. And the back is not as flat on this one because once you get to these outer edges, you are going to have to bring that in a little bit or these would just stand up way too high. I am going to make some solid colors like this, but I like making a two-tone flower with the little fringe like that. I just think those are so cute. We're going to take a thicker strip and instead of cutting straight into it, we're actually going to cut on the diagonal like that. And you can cut close together or far apart, whatever. You can just experiment. So we have all of our strips now cut on the diagonal. And we're going to do the same thing. Just glue and roll. And again, keeping our back nice and flat. And now that we have that one all glued together, this is the look we get when we do those on the diagonal. So I'm just going to keep making flowers and then we'll come back and get them all applied to our pillow. But how cute is this going to be? I have not glued anything down, but this is what we have so far. I made 23 flowers of various sizes and styles. I also used more of the olive green felt and I just cut leaves. I didn't even have a pattern and then I've tucked them up underneath there. Then I love this little ribbon. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. Almost looks like a satin ribbon with leaves on there and I thought that that looked really pretty as well. And before I begin gluing, I am going to insert a piece of cardboard between the front and the back so that way I don't glue my pillow together. And now I'm going to use my hot glue gun and I'm just going to start in the middle and work my way out on each side because I'm afraid if I start on the outside that everything will start getting bunched up if I don't put it exactly in the same position. So I'm just going to load that up and press and hold until it sets. And before I glue these two down, I'm going to move these to the side and tack down my leaf. And I actually want a little bit of a 3D effect, so I'm not going to glue my leaf all the way down. Then 
So I'm going to just continue gluing all of my pieces down. And for this little vine, I'm only going to tack it down in a couple of places because I want to have that 3D effect with it as well. And then once we get all of our flowers down, we're just going to come back in and just give everything a good fluff. So I have all the flowers glued on there and we have just a few more steps before we are finished with our pillow. But I have to say, I think this is the prettiest thing I've ever made. I just love the way this is turning out. Now what I want to do is use some of this white pom-pom trim to actually add a little bit of dimension to our vase here. Maybe along here and here. So I'm just going to play around with the placement, see what I like, and then we'll get it all glued down. And I like how this looks, so I'm going to get this glued into place. And I did make sure that I moved my cardboard down again so I won't be gluing the front and back of my pillow cover together. Little line of glue following the outline of my little vase here. I think that looks cute. So I'm just going to get the rest of these pieces glued down. And then we're going to add some interest to the sides. So my inspiration piece has all of this lattice work out here. And I don't have enough pink ribbon to do this particular decorative trim. So I'm just going to take this pretty little pink pom-pom trim and I'm just going to glue it down the sides, each side just like that. Three and a half inches from the outside edge to the inside edge of my little decorative trim here. And I've also folded the end of that trim under so it will have a finished edge and I'm going to glue that directly to the seam right here as well. And there she is. Oh my goodness. Maybe I'm just biased, but I think that this is even prettier than the inspiration photo that I used. I just love how that turned out. It's so, so pretty. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. Okay, friends, as we move into our final project, I've got a funny backstory I want to share with you about these boxes. So I had them sitting out on the kitchen counter and hubby walks by and says, Hey baby, do you need me to take those to the recycling bin for you? Or are you doing a project with the girls? And I said, yeah, I'm filming a project with the girls. And he says, Oh, so what are you making with our garbage this week? An entryway table? I hear everybody likes those. First of all, he's such a smart mouth. Second of all, I promise I do throw things away. I do have things that I put into the recycling bin. My whole home is not decorated with garbage, but I am not throwing away good boxes, especially when I need more storage in the craft room. So let's go ahead and get these boxes covered. And I like to use book pages on the bottoms. I also like to use a book page on the inside cover as well. That way I'm not using up all of my pretty scrapbooking paper. Now you can cover the inside of yours if you like. I do not. It's just going to have things like clothes pins and other little crafty things in there. So I'm not going to need the inside of it to be cute. But I do like the outside to be cute, so let me show you how I do my boxes. I like mixing colors and patterns as long as they coordinate, and so I've decided I'm using these three colored rose papers, and then I'll also be using the cute little pink gingham as well. I also like to start with the bottom and the inside using the book pages. So I place it on my box. So I'm going to have a little bit of about a quarter of an inch there. And then I'll mark a cut line here and a cut line here. And you can use scissors, but it's easier for me to use my paper trimmer. So I'm going to apply this to the bottom. And then off camera, I'm going to measure and cut one that's going to fit on the inside of my cover as well. I have several different types of glue. I've got glue stick. I have double-sided tape. Whatever glues you have on hand is going to be fine. I'm going to use my Mod Podge. And I just apply a thin coat. And I'm going to line it up. 
Then I put it on my craft table. I take my hands and rub on the inside of the box just to get and make sure all of that glue is going to stick to the paper. And when I use the Mod Podge, I don't go back over it like I would if I were decoupaging something on. I am just merely using the Mod Podge as a glue only. And I'm going to apply the inside in the same way. Now when I measure the sides of my box, it is three inches, but I am gonna cut my strips into four inch strips. That way I have a little bit of extra on each end to overlap underneath here and then inside the box. I am going to do just the front. I want to do the top before we do the back. So again, Mod Podge on the front. I'm going to line it up and press inside the box to make sure I'm getting good adhesion with my glue. Then I'm gonna take and fold it this way to get a good crease just like that. So there won't be any extra thickness in here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these little tabs off. And I haven't glued these down yet. We're gonna go ahead and crease those on both sides, just like that. Then when we lay this down, we're gonna bring this over to form that little corner there, just like you would when you were wrapping a present. So now that I've got all my creases, I'm gonna open this up and add my Mod Podge. And now with our glue applied, we just press everything back into place. And then I am gonna add a little extra glue right there in the corner. And I'm gonna set it back down and just make sure all of that glue has good adhesion. Now before we do the sides and the back, I want to do the top. So my paper is going to extend a little bit past that fold here. Then it's going to wrap around this way and it's going to wrap around the top as well. I'm gonna line this up as best I can. And again, we're gonna lay it down to make sure all of that glue has adhered. And now to wrap this, we need to clip right here into that corner. And then this will wrap around that way. And then this will get covered up by our other side strip. So none of that's gonna show. So we're gonna go ahead and fold and make our creases. Now we can clip those. And then we unfold everything and glue it all down. And now I'm gonna take my other piece and glue that over the back. But for the back piece, I have cut it three and three quarter inches high. And we're gonna do the same thing with putting our glue here. I'm gonna fold this back and make sure I get glue right up to that fold line. Place that at the crease. And again, turn over and press down. And crease just like we did. And before I glue this down, I'm gonna go ahead and piece in my sides. So I've cut a piece and I've creased it at the bottom to match these edges. And then we'll come and fold this over the edge here. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing. So now all I have to do is come back and glue all of these pieces down. And now I can come back and glue this piece here down. It really doesn't take long at all to cover these boxes. It's basically just measure, cut, crease, and glue. And we are almost finished. I am going to be hot gluing this pretty little lace trim because when we put our lace trim there, it's gonna help cover this area here where those two colors meet. I'm gonna take my hole punch take a pin and mark that and punch that out and then go down right below it and make another hole. So now I can take some ribbon and I'm going to take it in the bottom hole, back out the top one 
and thread it through this hole. So then when I pull, I can tie it closed just like that. Then I have this fray block because you can see that's what the ribbon looks like. So I've got those and now I'm just going to put my fray block on there. These are just so super cute. You could do these with shoe boxes as well. I do these boxes in the same fashion and I'm not going to cover them all on camera, but I am going to show you how I do these a little differently. The little raisin box, it opens here at the top. I don't want it to open that way. So I'm going to tape this edge closed. Then I take my X-Acto knife and I just cut along three sides that becomes your lid. Now when you cut that, this cuts your side away. So I just go in with hot glue and glue that back together. And you are just going to cover these in the same way. This is going to be my flap for the top, but I do this a little differently. I'm going to cut down each side here. I'm going to glue these together like this and then just cover as you would with the other boxes. Y'all, I am in love with these Trash to Treasure storage boxes. Now I just need to show you a closer look at how cute all of this week's projects turned out. appreciate you spending your time here with me today and I hope you found some inspiration from this week's projects. Please remember to subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations and until next week my sweet friends be blessed. <music>